Alright, and hey there Proxians, and this is Proxify here, and guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Case to Infinity Let's Play. So if you guys missed out during our last episode, uh, we are now actually heading into our way within the Tyrian Maze. Uh, we actually need to go and battle out with the next and uh, up and coming boss that is going to be here within this game, which is actually known as uh, Salamence and the uh, Chandelures that are also going to be a part of within that battle as well. Now, we only do have only two more bosses left, and of course, Course, that is going to be with that Salamence and the Chandelures and also too we do have I guess with the Kyra battle as well too which that is going to be uh, pretty crazy uh, but if you guys uh, haven't seen from the last episode we are now finally on the 6F floor now uh, we are actually within the uh, checkpoint area for the time being I'm pretty certain this is like the last of the checkpoint areas for Tyrian Maze and then right on after that then hopefully we should be able to go take care of Salamence and then jump right into the next part of the storyline so with all that being said I already went and did some off recording type of moving around with the different items and everything so you guys don't have to go see me go through that but i know that you guys don't want to go and uh, see me head through the tyrant maze because again this area is pretty lengthy and i have stressed that out from before is that you can get yourself pretty much lost within this place even though that it is only just 11 floors but the areas within them that hold out with all the different floors are very 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 long and you cannot figure out exactly or pinpoint exactly where the uh, the steps are going to be so i'm going to go and just cut that uh, we'll cut out this other part for you guys and then we'll jump right into the actual Salamence battle so i'll see you guys when we actually do get on over uh, to that battle uh, when we actually do go across on over to it okay guys so i am back and here we are we're finally now on the b11f we're going to be going and finishing off here with tyria maze and going on and taking care of Salamence. so with all that being said guys let's go and do this thing so i actually do have quite a bit of orbs like fully prepared on what we actually do need to go and do for this fight so uh i already have like the slow orb i already have like the slumber orb and we should basically be set for this battle with Salamence, and we shouldn't be really uh worrying about all that too much now apparently from what i have been gathered uh with this battle is that apparently Salamence is actually one of the scarier type of bosses to actually go and fight uh, because if you're not too careful enough and if you're not actually uh, pre-planned up for like levels or anything uh, before coming into this, this is where things can probably get a little bit hectic uh, for myself but also probably for you guys who have never actually went and played this game before because again this is blind for me so I don't really know all about uh, things uh, too much here within this but I am like just kind of looking a little bit like just smidge bit on like other things that are happening just so I can kind of keep up with everything that's going going on with the story so Salamence does have some pretty scary moves and uh, we've already seen that from before we've already seen Salamence with his dragon breath and some other pretty much uh, wild other type of moves here but uh something is going on here Frisian is kind of looking up and everybody else is looking up I guess uh whoa okay so it looks like the glacier palace is literally right on top of us and I think that would actually be a really cool thumbnail to kind of go and add that into uh our time here uh, for this episode now, I don't think that's just going to be the only thing that's going to be right above us, because uh, I believe we are also going to be seeing the Chandelures and the Salamances that are going to be here. So apparently it's not just floating, it's also traveling across the land, and it's already come this far. What, but, uh, do you... am I the only one who hears something else too? Mm. Well, thanks a lot, Emolga, you actually brought it up. Yeah, so here comes Salamance, the Pokemon that we've all been uh, seeing so far throughout the past few episodes. Now, as finally as time has come to go and do this battle. So it's Salamance. Yes, it is. Uh-oh, and he seems pretty angry. Uh, so, whoa, uh, who is this guy? Uh, it's Salamance. Uh, he's one of Muna's gangs. Uh, what? Yeah, and, uh, Volga doesn't really know who the Salamance is yet, but now you finally get yourself a, a night, uh, not really a not so uh, good introduction to him. So what do we do, Pross? Well, let's go and fight our way. We've been doing this so far throughout all the other past uh, times with all the other different Muna gangs, so we really shouldn't have too much of a problem. All right, and with that being said, let's go and do this. Okay. So first thing is first is that we should probably go and actually start setting up for a Slumber Orb and putting everybody to sleep, and that is exactly what I'm going to do, just so I can make sure that everyone has a nice, good, easier time around here. So there we go. So we actually went and put Salamence to sleep, but it seems like unfortunately uh, it does not really work with the Chandelures all that too much. Okay. Well, that's not good. Uh, maybe we should probably go and set up for an old Dodge Orb just in case so that we don't have to really go and worry about all this too much. There we go. So we'll go and uh, make everyone dodge around with this, all the attacks and everything. Okay. Here we go. Uh, let's go and set up for a T Wave. And let's go and set that up on Chandelure here. Now, I actually do have a safe state, so if things don't uh, go out as the way as it planned out to be, we'll just have to go and uh, do something. 
Oh, oh. Well, at least that missed. Thank goodness that actually did miss. Um, let's go and uh, set up for another thing here. We're going to go for a slow orb, just so that we don't have to worry about these guys all that too much. So, we're going to set that up. Okay, nice. We already went and knocked down on the chandelier. Now, uh, uh, that could become a problem. Ugh, come on. Let me go and uh, set up for a T-wave here on the, uh, on the chandelier. Okay. Now, I think I'm going to do one other little quick thing. And that is going to set up for an all-powered-up orb, since we actually do have quite a bit of these guys, and we're going to actually uh, set this up for uh, everybody else that's going to be here. Just so that now we should be able to hopefully at least kind of take care of Solomon's a little bit quicker. Okay, nice. 83 damage. That's a little bit nice. All right, go do your thing for Zion, but be careful, though. Um, I'm going to set up for a Thunderbolt. Let's see if that's going to do a lot. Look at that. Look at that damage. That's insane. Maybe I should go for maybe one more, but I don't really want to go and waste out on too much of those. Oh, and I, again, I missed it. Oh, and again, come on, guys. Oh, nice. We actually went and taken care of the Salamis. Not a problem. And there we go, guys. That's how we get it done. The power of the orbs are with us here. So sweet. So even though, the, unfortunately, the Slumber Orb and the, uh, and the other different orbs don't really work out all that too well on those chandeliers, but... You know, it's okay. At least we still have a little bit of some more of the Slum Wars within our uh, inventory, and we never really got to use up our Petrified Orb, because we still actually be able to keep that for when we actually do go and run into an armed monster house. It's okay, everybody. Let's go and move on. Well, we still got the chance. Whoa, this shit is still, still up. Uh-oh. Uh, ah, thug. Oh, no. Oh, well, thank goodness. Espeon came here to save the day. So it's a bit early for, uh, to be letting your guard down, Emolga. Espeon. Oh, finally, you guys are here. So, Espia, don't be going sneaking up on me like that. Uh, well, no, sorry, I mean, uh, thanks for saving me, though. Uh, looks like everyone is still in one piece. Uh, thank goodness for that, at least. Well, Emrion is uh, getting everything ready, so he's just up ahead. So let's go and hurry. Uh, huh? uh, getting up? Oh, getting what already? Uh, well, we found a way to get to the, gla uh, to the Glacier Palace. Oh, so you did? You mean that uh, you traveled across the sky? Uh, that's, like, seriously amazing, really. Uh, you two really are geniuses. Well, of course they are. Uh, I don't think I had anything to do with uh, with our genius, though. Uh, well, never mind that now. Just come along with me. All right, well, let's go and uh, follow Espeon, and let's see uh, how Embryon is doing. Yeah, it seems like Embryon and Espeon know quite a bit of things about what goes on, because, again, they are, like, like, um, like, I guess, like, explorers as well, too, right? Because they're the ones that actually know everything about the enter cards and the Magna Gates and everything that goes on. So aren't these the summoning of the Magna Gates? So, Embryon, you figured out how to go and use the enter cards to reach the Glacier Palace after all? Well, more or less, though. Uh, we'll be using uh, some pretty special enter cards. Uh, these should go and let us straight to there without any dungeons or anything. Uh, whoa, uh, I knew that you guys were geniuses. You made awesome enter cards like that. So, afraid not. Uh, these enter cards weren't made by the two of us. Uh, the cards that we're about to go and use were are ones that we picked up. Uh, picked up. Uh, that's right. Uh, we found them among the glaciers, and we were poking them around, uh, or we were poking through the chunks of the ice to fall through the glacier palace, and that's where we found these enter cards. So how can that be? Well, basically, Espeon's intuition was exactly right, so if you think back to the first time that we came to the Great Glacier, you remember when we stood in front of the glacier, uh, before the crevices? Right around where we found the signs of the main gate being summoned. Do you remember that? Uh, so I just made a gate for you, Uh, I'm trying to remember that too, but I can't really put my finger on it, but we'll probably have to see maybe a flashback or something around here, right? And then we'll try to use the enter cards in there, and... Oh, right! Okay, now that makes sense. Yeah, because it actually lit up a path, right? To actually guide us into where we were going into next, on the light, it leads straight to the glacier. Yeah, uh, there's no doubt about it. Well, the, the remains of this main gate, this path used uh, to lead straight to the, from here to the Great Glacier. Well, what? But that means uh, someone summoned the main gate here and then made their way to the Great Glacier. So that means someone came here before us. So I can't say for sure, but maybe some Pokemon living around here used something like Enter Cards and used this path to get around to the crevices or something. Hmm, so I didn't see that at the time, but thinking about it now, only one Pokemon capable of making that main gate pops into my mind, right? Only one? Yep. And only one. And the Pokemon who's according to the stories reached that spot before we did. I'm going to probably put my finger on it. Is it probably Keldeo? Oh, uh, you don't mean. Uh, you can't be suggesting Keldeo? Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's right. It has to be Keldeo. Keldeo's the only one Pokemon who reached the Great Glacier before uh, we did. And that old main gate that we found, it would make sense. So if Keldeo used the Edge Curse to summon it, 
Then if you did, then that would mean Keldeo is also an Enter Card user, and the Genius one at that. So Keldeo the Enter Card user? I just can't imagine it. I mean, like, all the years I knew him, I never saw him glance at a set of Enter Cards, you know? Or perhaps he could go and pick up a skill for some reason along the way. Although he appears to have made up his own method, Keldeo has a real gift for it. And frankly, the arrangement that he thought of for crossing the crevices was breathtaking, and the Enter Cards that we found this time. Uh, so what? Do you think that those are Keldeo's handiwork too? Well, it seems likely, but Kelia must have known that the Glacier Palace uh, would take off sooner or later, so he made the Entercars that, that could cross the sky and dropped them down here. So when Espion first suggested that we came to check here for ideas, honestly, I was baffled by it. Well, of course, I didn't even think that we'd even find anything like these cars lying around. Well, my intuition was just about Keldeo, but when I followed on from the conclusion that Keldeo was the Entercard user, I th thought that I might learn more in the p place uh, where he passed through. So that was the only guess, but Keldeo alone, while I can't explain why, I knew that I was not mistaken. That's why my intuition told me. Huh. Well, that's amazing. So kind of more, uh, like, freaky, really. Uh, that is wisdom of yours, Espeon. Well, at any rate, uh, no one ever heard from Keldeo again, so after the enter of the Gl Glacier Palace. So now that we found these enter cards left behind, it's almost as if they were meant for us. So when you look at it like that, uh, you have concluded that Keldeo is still in the Glacier Palace. Well, Keldeo is... And that he's Kyra's enemy? If he went to the trouble of leaving us behind with a method across the sky, it hardly seems possible that he's out of the help to Kyra with his goal. Well, Keldeo is, uh... Uh, well, so I guess he's still going to be up there? So in that Glacier Palace, Keldeo's is there. There are still a whole lot of mysteries, but the only way that we're going to understand them is if we go there. But the last time that we actually heard about anything about Keldeo, Kyra even said that Keldeo was never even going to be there in the first place. Well, I guess we'll have to find out for that within the next episode. So are we going to be spotting out Keldeo within the Glacier Palace? We'll have to figure that out for next time. So don't forget to leave a comment, like, or subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys then. And peace.